Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for your courtesy, and thank you, Ranking Member. Thank you, Ms. McCabe, for being here today. I'm glad to have the opportunity to talk with you about the impacts of your power plant rules on my home state of Nebraska. As you know, Nebraska is the only state in the nation with a wholly publicly owned utility power sector. Public power utilities are cost-based entities with no profit motivation or obligation to provide stakeholder dividends. That is vitally important, I believe, to keep in mind as EPA considers these proposed rules. The compliance cost will be directly borne by Nebraska residents through their electric rates. Today I'd like to touch on some of the concerns that were raised in the public comment period by my state's public power utilities and by the Nebraska Department of Environmental Quality regarding the mandates for carbon emission reductions from existing power plants. Our state has written that the building blocks contain, quote, inaccurate assumptions and unrealistic expectations that will result in emission goals that may be unattainable regardless of the emission reduction strategies employed, unquote. So let's start with building block one. The Nebraska DEQ states, quote, heart rate improvements of four to six percent are not achievable at Nebraska coal-fired plants. Nebraska utilities are required by law to deliver least cost, reliable electricity. As such, they have already implemented most, if not all, achievable heat rate improvements at existing facilities. I, I think I said heart rate before, it's heat rate. As you know, as a basis for setting the building block one level, EPA relied on a 2009 study by Sargent and Lundy. It is now widely known that EPA misconstru misconstrued this study, hypothesizing heat rate improvements discussed in the study on a cumulative basis when this was not indicated by the study. In fact, Sargent and Lundy has explicitly stated that the ranges presented in their report, quote, do not support the conclusion that any individual coal-fired EGU or any aggregation of coal-fired EGUs can achieve 6% heat rate improvement through implementation of best practices and equipment upgrades as estimated by the EPA, unquote. So our state DEQs say that building block number one is unachievable. Sargent and Lundy say that you got it wrong. Is this an area that EPA plans to correct before finalizing the rule? And how can EPA justify emission reduction targets based on building blocks if the building blocks themselves are so very flawed? Well, thank you for your question, Senator. And uh, this gives me an opportunity to start saying something I think I'll be saying a lot today, um, which is that um, uh, we have received many, many comments on, on the um, proposed rules um, and are looking very closely at all of them. This is just one area where we've s received significant comment. We expect it to. That's what the public process is about. Um, uh, let me also mention that um, in designing the proposal, um, and in setting up the building blocks, what, what EPA did was uh, look across the range of activities that are currently in use by the power sector uh, that have the result of reducing carbon emissions. And there, there are numerous. Um, they go way beyond the four that we identified and included in our building blocks. And um, our, our assumption in going into the proposal was not that every single uh, source would be able to achieve exactly the, the amount of reductions we identified in each building block. Um, in, in fact, we believe that some can do more in one area, and some may, may choose to do less in other areas. So um, the, the kinds of comments that we're getting that suggest uh, that in some states in particular, uh, one approach is more um, uh, suitable than another is, is exactly the kind of comment that we expected to get. Now that being said, of course we're looking very closely at any comments that suggest that our, that our factual conclusions um, uh, need to be uh, re rethought, and we will be looking at that very closely and, and, and making adjustments as appropriate as we always do um, uh, after re reviewing comments on a rule. I appreciate hearing that be because sometimes the statements that um, I hear from EPA and my constituents and our power, public power in Nebraska, the DEQ in Nebraska, what we hear from EPA is that things are pretty well set 
and that uh, while there is a public comment period, uh, we haven't felt that there, there will be much accommodation to the concerns that we have in our state with these specific concerns. So you give me some hope here, and I hope you will follow through with that as well. Another question. According to Sergeant and Lundy, even with the best maintenance practices in place, performance of many of the heat rate improvement methods included in the 2009 report will degrade over time. EPA did not take into consideration the normal heat rate degradation when it applied the heat rate improvement ranges across the coal-fired fleet, nor did it consider that units are the most efficient at full load and their efficiencies decrease with decreasing loads and with frequent load changes. Don't you think those are significant oversights uh, by the EPA and an overestimation of the real heat rate improvements that can be achieved and sustained across a coal-fired fleet? I mean, the, these are important issues that people have raised that, that we're looking at very closely, Senator. Do you feel that um, that you can work with states in trying to um, really address that overestimation? Well, we, we spend a lot of time talking with states and with the utilities as well, who, who have raised these kinds of issues with us. Um, and uh, we, we have one-on-one -on -one conversations with states. We are meeting with groups of states to talk about a whole range of issues. So um, in particular, states have been very forthcoming with us about particular concerns in their states, as have utilities. Uh, so, so as I say, when, when there are one-on-one -on -one conversations that we need to have, we have them. Um, and then we're looking at these issues as they apply across the whole, um, the, the whole spectrum of the rule. But I do want to emphasize that in the final rule, we very much want to maintain the flexibility of the states to have choices as to how they comply. Would you uh, commit to me that when uh, you are contacted by our public utilities in Nebraska or state government in Nebraska, uh, that you will respond to their concerns and let me know uh, that, that you have done so? Um, I can certainly commit that we will um, uh, converse with, with anybody that, who calls us from Nebraska and we'll certainly keep you up to date on those conversations. And uh, to the extent that we've already had those, um, we'll be sure to give you information about that. Okay. I think you'll be getting a lot of calls. Okay. Thank you very we're, much. We're happy to get them. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Sir. Chair.